All right, Magic Pencil. We're doing this again, one more time. What's up, YouTube? I'm J-Rod of Battle Brawl Production. Today, we are finally taking a look at Eternal Higgins, as we are finally revisiting the Higgins brand. Now, if you guys remember about half a year ago, I did take a look at the actual Higgins brand ink, and I rated it pretty low on my scale of 1 to 10, but as an, someone who's grown a lot more as an inker and an artist, I really have found a new appreciation for it, and we're actually going to be revisiting this specific drawing ink, as I have learned the Higgins trick. But I figured in the meantime, we should take a look at Higgins Eternal, or Eternal Higgins. I've seen it said both ways. What's really interesting about this is that it's the same price as the drawing ink, you know, $7.99 to $9.99 depending on where you go. Instead of getting one fluid ounce, you get two and a half fluid ounces. So I'm really curious to see what the difference between these two inks are. It mentions how this is an archival carbon writing ink for all official reproduction work. Dual it with disposable water, not water. So is that the difference between these two inks? Is that this one is not waterproof and this one is? Uh, that's the only real difference I could find on the patchy outside of here it actually does highlight more calligraphy work and airbrush work opposed to this one which mentioned more drawing and more illustration so I'm just kind of curious outside the waterproof what the difference is if we open it up and you can see the bottle it's quite different from the normal Higgins bottle and again Higgins is one of those iconic brands where when you see this shape you think Higgins here this is very different it is essentially just kind of like a little jar almost like a jar of honey I'm pretty excited to test this out so let's go ahead and bring out our Batman sketchbook It is smooth. Again, this ink, it's been a little bit since I've actually used the original Higgins ink, but I can say that they are really smooth. The problem that I personally have with the ink, and it's not a huge problem, it's actually something I've gotten used to, is that essentially with a brush, because it's meant to be more of a layering ink, so you're actually supposed to go in and layer everything down, and you actually work from a light tone all the way to a darker tone, I kind of prefer doing the opposite with my actual ink. I prefer to go from dark to light. I prefer to mix for ink washes. I rather get that solid black white away instead of having to work to get it. So that's the thing about Higgins that I didn't appreciate then that I really do appreciate now that you can actually get those really nice layering effects. Now shifting gears real quick, it's actually pretty good with the dip pen, which isn't surprising because the other one was really good. Let's try it with a quill nib and grab the thing. The one thing I don't like is that because of the shape of this, it actually actually is kind of awkward to get a good dip in there like I kind of feel like I'm gonna stick it in more and this one doesn't have an eyedropper uh, not actually getting some good consistent lines so that's interesting yeah that's that's interesting let's go ahead and test it with a brush and then I might have another test we'll do that I think would be really fun to I wet our brush pick up a little bit of it and yeah it goes down really smooth again this is a very smooth ink but it is again a layering ink so you can see that problem I mentioned before where oh well, not really problem just my personal distaste is really kind of shining through where you can see it's not a hundred percent black going down on the page you have to work towards that hundred percent black which I would have preferred that hundred percent black that you can then just kind of water down see something like this is actually really cool it's just this takes a little more work and I prefer to go the opposite way but if I wet my brush a little bit and then I dry off a little bit of water, we're going to see we're going to be able to start to pull that black and we're actually able to extend it out and create almost like a gradient. And that's the thing about non-waterproof ink that's actually kind of interesting is that you're able to go in and actually kind of pull it out and create these cool gradients and textures, which I do like. It's just that you kind of have to work at it. You can create some really cool stuff in it. In a way, it almost simplifies the ink wash process, which is still pretty fascinating to me. But that is our test. I'm actually really curious to see how this is going to work in an actual fountain pen because it's not grabbing the nibs on our quill nib super well. The dip pen was okay. But I'm really curious to see how this is actually going to work with a real fountain pen. So let's go ahead and grab that out of my big box of inking. Alright, so I got my fountain pen. Alright, doing a few tests. It is uh, noticeably more gray. I think it's still kind of flowing through the pen, so it's not as super pigmented. I'm noticing as I'm writing more, it is actually getting a little darker, which is nice. So yeah, now our lines are very consistent. We got a very strong black. I really like that. Very little gray taping off unless we start applying light pressure, which is fine. That's kind of normal with a pen. This will probably be the best way to actually ink this for solid line work. So there we go. That's working better. So 
now that we have essentially a good idea of how this works, we do see that it isn't waterproof and that we're actually able to go in and create the cool textures and do some radiance. Uh, we have an idea of how it works. Nims, not, not very well, just okay. And that with a fountain pen, it actually is going to be pretty awesome. So now I think the next step is to do the illustration. So let's go ahead and jump into that. Today's illustration is, of course, of our superhero Wrath. I'm really excited for this one because I specifically sketched this one with Higgins in mind. And of course, we will be using Eternal Higgins, which I'm really excited to be testing out. But in conjunction with that, we'll also be using the normal Higgins, as I have a few fun ideas that will with this, just to make this piece a little nicer. I also will be using this fountain pen, which will be the first time we illustrate with fountain pen. And of course, we'll use our normal brushes, cheap Dollar Tree brushes combined with somewhat expensive German reproduction aesthetic brushes. That's just how we roll on the channel. Now we got everything set up. Let's go ahead and roll that super time lapse. Making this piece was definitely interesting. A challenge for sure, but I knew how to approach it. Since I had a non-waterproof ink and a waterproof ink, I knew what areas of the ink would have to be used in which spot. So I broke up the piece into two main sections. The smoke effect, which would be done with the Higgins Eternal, and everything else, which would be done with the normal Higgins drawing. So I started working, and that layering problem. Again, Higgins is one of those inks that's designed to layer, and you're not gonna get 100% black when you put the pen down paint, which does bother me. Either way, I just kept working and took my time. I knew this piece was definitely gonna take longer than it normally would, or should have with another ink, but I kept going. And eventually I started getting everything together and I had some confidence in my line work and I just kept working until I felt like I was really happy. And after the piece was done, I touched up with some whining, touched up with some Higgins, and just tried to make sure that the errors were more solid 100% black. And then the magic really started to happen with the Higgins Eternal. The Higgins Eternal's non-waterproof nature meant that it worked more with what I wanted and I was able to get some really awesome gradients with it. All I had to do was apply it very heavily onto the paper and then slowly add water to spread it out. And that gradient effect ended up looking amazing when it came to actually doing the smoke. Now the area that I was doing this in was far bigger than how I normally do this, so I actually had to break out this giant brush that I normally never use, but it was really fun to actually use it. I just kept taking my time to create a really fun, really strong, and really just kind of cool gradient that did feel like smoke and just kind of kept working at it. I found it to be very enjoyable, though again, I do find that Higgins is not my preferred ink when it comes to doing my job. Only thing I would do to make it a little better is add some splatter or some lightning, but I think right now this is a good place for it to stop. And we're done. And I have to say that while I do like this piece, one of the most frustrating things about making art on YouTube is that at the end of the day, if you finish a piece and you don't think that, oh, it looks bad, that's not the worst thing. The worst thing that can pop in your head for me is this could have been better with a different ink. And that's what I felt with this piece. That was the first thing that popped in my mind. And while I do like it and it is available on my R station account for a $1 digital download, I still do not think that it is as good as it could have been. And I think a lot of that is because of the nature of Higgins. And I'm going to explain it as best as I can is that for me, I prefer to have a hundred percent black a hundred percent white and I'm going to get a good range out of that gray but those are my three main approaches to inking one of my blacks one of my whites where can I put in my gray with Higgins what I'm noticing is that it is a layer of ink and while I do appreciate laying inks far more now than I did in the past I still prefer to get that hundred percent black every time I put the ink down to me I'm not using watercolors I'm using ink there's a solidity to it that is not apparent with Higgins now Higgins eternal on the other hand does what it needs to do and I like it a lot more than their actual drawing ink and the reason is because it's not waterproof. You're going to use this for gradient effects and other really cool things that you can't do with normal inks. And because of that, because of that kind of mental change, I'm already knowing how I'm going to use it. So that's why this part of the illustration is done with the normal drawing ink and this half is done with the actual non-waterproof one. So I'm able to go in and create these gradients. I'm able to add to this that I normally wouldn't be able to do with the actual drawing one. And the drawing one is frustrating that I can't get the layers, I can't get that solid lack that I want with Without layering and I think that's annoying but with the non waterproof one I'm able to do what I need to do I'm able to get what I know I can expect out of a non waterproof ink and I'm gonna actually rate it higher I'm actually gonna rate this on my scale of 1 to 10 of 5 I think that for the price again 7 to 9.99 depending on where you go you get two and a half ounces that's more than double what you get with drawing ink for the same price you're able to actually go in and get what you need out of this ink and I really do like that I think the quantity is good the quality is really good but it's not the best waterproof ink I've used it still has a few of the Higgins problems where if you do want that 100% black, you're going to be layering it. However, it is a non-waterproof ink, so layering is going to be something you're already expecting, which really did kind of throw me off with the actual drawing ink of Higgins. So we will revisit Higgins in the future. I do have two videos planned, so go ahead and subscribe if you want to see those and look forward to that. But overall, that's my opinion on this. I do love the piece. I do think that Higgins overall is a good ink, but it's not for me. What do you guys think of the artwork areas I could improve in or areas you like? What do you think about Higgins as a whole? Do you think that I was just too harsh on it? Do you think 
think that it's just all on my end. Overall, I'd still love to hear you guys' opinions. What do you think? But with all that said, like the video if you enjoyed it and subscribe to the channel for more art and animation based content. I'm J Rod Battle Brawl Productions. I draw power and my own soul.